All right, we're getting close to lunch, but we have a few more reflections here. And so we're going to turn it over to Mark and Shannon. Mark and Shannon, are you out there? We are indeed. We are here. Um, so I'll share my screen. What <clears throat> um always blown away by the the journey that that uh, a lightning round can take us on. Um I did wanted to share my screen and and again let people know that this is a resource that's being built and it'll be available to everyone uh from here on out. Um but I I just I, I there were some interesting points uh between the three of these that I wanted to uh kind of stitch together. And this lens that we were going to use is looking really at the conditions for impact. Um, and the Zoom crew has already kind of been sharing their observations around impact. But um, I just, one by one, I wanted to say that, that Taylor's points uh, resonate with me as someone who's been uh, struggling in design and product management and development for so many years. And how many times have you done a retrospective almost robotically and and it, there's a sadness there because what you're doing is acknowledging all the stuff that didn't work right um, and what potential there is to use the gifts that we have around being present on the teams where we're working to bring that presence to observe what's happening now and try and influence what will happen next to in, uh, improve the ability for those outcomes. Um, I just really wanted to thank Taylor for, for that. Um, uh, Benjamin, I appreciated AI as a topic that um, that I've been curious about, and and it just seems like in the last year it went from uh, an interesting thing to almost consuming the world faster than than software consume the world, and uh, and these other waves uh, from Alvin Toffler and Future Shock and Third Wave back in the day. It's just these waves are now coming uh, so quickly. Um, I just want to uh, thank Benjamin for highlighting, especially. Um, looking at the conditions for impact there is understanding where conversations happen. Um, in his talk, it was uh, observing if if AI is seen as a technology and it's thrown into a tech area, um, that's not really looking at it uh, for the strategic impact that it has. And I think that's a lesson that we can um, we certainly resonate with every time we're trying to lead a powerful conversation and we find ourselves not close to any centers of power having amazing conversations with passionate people that are there and willing to have them, um, but not uh, being seen as a, for the strategic potential it has um, to create that the connections and the community and, and bring the imagination, increase the imaginal capacity of an organization. Um, so that was something I wanted to thank Benjamin for. And Yvonne, um, so many things. I mean, this board is our, our our observations around the conditions are littered with things just at the the flurry at the end of your speech, um, and and appreciate especially um, again hitting on authenticity, but also vulnerability. Um, and uh, every time uh, I find uh, I'm not being effective in my role is usually when I've put up a wall. Uh, and I'm not being authentic, I'm not being vulnerable, and I'm not really putting my energy back on the crowd and, and focusing out there. There's something where I've pulled it back uh, for one reason or another. And I think that vulnerability is a quick way um, to put the put the uh, energy back in the room and uh, and ease back into that supportive role. Um, Shannon, I, I wanted to invite you as well. Uh, some of the things that we've seen in the the chat or some of the your own observations. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mark, and appreciate your your thoughts on all of those. I think as we were, you know, imagining around conditions for impact, I also think about, especially when you're talking about the AI and um and just that whole presentation and just the the impact that the technology has had so quickly, thinking about what conditions were in place for so many users to start using uh, AI technology as soon as it was launched, right? Like, I think there's some interesting, I don't know the exact statistics, but like number of users that were using chat GPT was just absurd compared to, you know, how quickly other users, you know, were using other technologies that have hit the market. And I think about what conditions were in place for that to have the impact that it had and what conditions continue, like, do we develop to allow people to use those technologies in new and different ways? Um, and also how are we communicating those? And then I think too, just around, you know, this topic of with facilitation, 
you know, just thinking about what conditions are we setting for our participants to be able to fully participate and be impacted by the things that they're learning, the conversations that they're having, the people they're connecting with. Um, and then on the flip side of that, I've also been thinking about too with, with all of these uh, connections and things that are happening with participants here in the Zoom room, but also participants in the room is that uh, what are the conditions for us when we're a participant? not just as a facilitator, but what are the conditions that we, uh, you know, allow ourselves to be in to be impacted, to listen, to hear those stories, to, you know, get that information. Uh, what conditions are we, you know, in a learning environment or in a, a conference are we, uh, you know, showing up as that allow us to show up as great participants. And so we've got some really amazing participants uh, in the Zoom room too. So I want to shout everyone out. And if there's other uh, reflections or things that people are thinking about when we think of the conditions for impact, curious. Uh, in the room and also in Zoom, if anyone wants to uh, jump in with your thoughts. Douglas, any questions from there in the room or observations? Scanning the room for for uh, hands. Let's see a lot of yet. hungry faces there <laughs> staring at you. We stand between them and food. I, I kind of have a question both for Ben, uh, ben and Yvonne. Um, so listening to the, this notion of audience deserve to feel the facilitation, um, you know, what's your facilitation story? And <clears throat> Yvonne talked about, you know, or I'm sorry, and then Ben, we're talking about some of the um, artificial intelligence to say, um, this isn't how I would have done it as a human in terms of like what the AI says. And for me, I was thinking instantly, is that not that? diversity, right? Is that something that kind of takes us out of our, and, and I, I'm, I'd be really interested to sit, you know, around a campfire with Ben and Yvonne and ask the question, what is AI for diversity? What, what might AI for diversity mean? And what might AI do for real-time facilitation story development? Ben and Yvonne, I'm just going to call an audible. Let's meet over here at the camera and do a little quick, uh, quick little roll. Rock and roll, Doug. Thank you. Over here at the camera, if y'all would, yeah. Ben and Yvonne. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So just uh, some comments on what Stephen had to say. Uh, Okay, where am I facing? Uh, camera. camera. Okay, yeah, at the camera. Yeah, that thing. Right. <laughs> um, so, do you want to answer initially from an AI perspective, and then I will jump in? Yeah. Yeah, I think you know from an AI perspective, I think it's important to think about you know what we mean by diversity. Um, is it a different kind of cognition that? we need to open our minds up to if we're going to accept it as a partner in our work? Absolutely. But like any other partnering or, or human collaboration, it's you have to assume that it's not going to be perfect. It will be biased. It's incumbent upon us in those partnerships to be mindful of where that bias might arise and what it might look like. Um, the other thing I want is, you know, with AI, it, we, you know, we obviously all believe that encouraging diversity is critical for ourselves, for our organizations, for our communities. Um, I don't think we need to go out of our way to bring in AIs necessarily, but it can challenge us to think in different ways, which is, I think, part of the value of diversity. Thank you. I think that's absolutely correct. I will also say that I'm glad you brought up bias, right? Because as human beings, every single one of us alive is biased, whether that's based on current or past lived experience, exposures or lack thereof, there's bias in all of us. And those programming AI, right? Those designing for AI themselves are biased. So I think it's incredibly important to be responsible to try to mitigate bias as much as you possibly can. And one way of doing that is to engage in community, right? And to expose what you're trying to build to others so that their vantage point is thus included because they have a better understanding of the potential pitfalls and harms that can occur if, you know, if their perspectives aren't included. So I think that that's critically important. All right. Uh, yeah, I'd, like to, I'd like to add something 
as, um, as someone who studied AI in college to that perspective about diverse perspectives, if that's okay. Um, if we think about where AI comes from, it comes from whatever learning sets it's been fed. Mm -hmm. So while we might in some cases think of the AI as a different perspective, it could actually help us with diversity and innovation by recognizing that in a lot of cases, it's the common perspective. So it could help us to question, hey, if that's the common perspective or that's what the learning, that's what emerged from the learning set, how might we think about it differently than the AI came up with? Yeah, I think that presents a very interesting dialogue, right? I think one of the things that myself and my team are focused on, especially when it comes to AI and the dialogues on it is, what are we doing to ensure that not only there are multiple perspectives and voices at the table in the design work, but also to make sure that we're not upholding continued systems of oppression and marginalization that have occurred in our society that are kind of like the pillars in many respects of our society. And how can AI help to overcome those barriers and those challenges, but not feeding into the existing systems, creating more challenges and barriers than we already have? Yeah, that, that's a really great point. I mean, I, I, I think the, again, sort of back to the initial conversation and in my talk, you know, there's, there's very real sense that this is dangerous and this is threatening. There's a very real sense that this represents an opportunity. And, and I think that's what we're talking about. It's, it's really both at the same time. Um, you know, I think that our biggest enemy with AI is urgency, right? I mean, there's such an, a, a, an urgency to do something impactful, to do something big, you know, to get chat GPT out there that sometimes, you know, we don't stop and think about you know, where might we be making mistakes or taking advantage of people or instilling biases? And, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, with our clients, I, I tell them we have to slow down to speed up, right? Because um, if you push a model to market too quickly and it's got some problem with it and it hurts somebody, that's oftentimes unrecoverable. So, yeah. Yeah, it's fiduciary responsibility 101. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to to extend an invitation to Taylor if I mean if he he also might have anything to uh, or questions for Taylor as well. I was getting my I was getting my product placement out. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so the the one thought that I had related here uh, when it comes to measurement and the things that we're trying to you know, turn into metrics that dictate the outcomes that we're looking for. When we begin to list out what we want to measure, we have to be really aware of are those things, are, are those things on our list because they're just assumed to be the things that we should measure and put another way, is there a sort of inherent bias in the things that we believe we should be measuring as opposed to what truly kind of A, equalizes and B actually leads to the outcomes that we're looking for. So as we are, you know, as you reflect on the activity that we did, or if you are going to go back and do it again, maybe with your team, each of the measurement pieces, each of the metrics that you list, make sure you kind of challenge yourself to say, okay, is this measurement, is the assumption that this measurement is based on an inherently biased assumption? Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Taylor. Yeah. Great talks. Bef bef uh, just real quick, I just wanted to draw uh, folks' attention to some activities that uh, that you can check out. Um, we have, if you're doing sketch noting, some people are already sharing some of their visual sketches. We have a place for you to drop them there. People's social media uh, connections, uh, that's happening. So there's community and hey, connection. Mark, uh, oh. you're not sharing your screen, just real quick. Oh, 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 yeah, here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, there we go. Um, just drawing your attention over here on the side. If you have any sketch notes you want to share, if you want to drop your social media connections in here, and maybe even flag a note uh, specifically with your name, uh, if there's someone in particular you want to connect with. 
Um, we also have an area here to share your uh, setup selfie. So if you're remote, we'd love to see what are your, if you want to share, um, what are your setups? What do you use? What's critical? And if you're there in the room, what's your mobile setup uh, for when you go into these spaces and try and capture all this wonderful knowledge? I also wanted to do a shout out that at lunchtime, uh, Zoom crew is going to be hosting some virtual breakouts and the topics have been suggested here. So feel free if uh, once you have your lunch, if there's some time left, uh, there will be some breakouts if you want to jump in Zoom and we'll get you situated in one of these impromptu unconference breakout rooms. Okay, that's it, Douglas. Back to you.